Hi, can you just tell me if you can hear me? Yes, you can hear me. Great. Okay, so a few weeks ago, I asked if you wanted me to do a Q&A session and I asked you to leave me questions under the video. Now, um, I've got kind of two pages of questions in my pad and some of the things kind of relate to the same thing. So so what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and do a couple of Q&A sessions. This is the first one. And I'm going to try and group together the questions. So, Joy, I think it was, asked me how to change the blade and what the difference was between the standard blade and the deep cut blade. So... I'm going to cover that today. Somebody also asked me um, about cutting problems, tears, what blade depth, cut pressure, that kind of thing. So they kind of all linked together. So that's why I'm putting them all together. And then another question was, what was the difference between the cutting mat and the scanning mat? So I'm going to try and cover that as well. And then if I get time, I'm just going to, I'm going to show you how I made this little flower. This is vellum. And I made this flower this morning, and this is made from just a simple basic shape that's in the machine. So if I get time, I'll show you how to do that. I don't know if you'll see it better against a piece of white card. It's just three layers of vellum. Okay, so the first thing is the blades. So your turquoise blade is your standard blade, and your purple blade is your deep cut blade. And Joy asked how to change the blade and what's the difference between them. So, the thing that I always tend to forget, and somebody reminded me in a live session a few weeks ago, on the back of your spatula, there's this kind of foam section, and this is to help you change your blade. So, here's a standard blade. I'm going to try and just move you down a bit so you can see the desk a little bit better okay right so if you undo your blade and take the cap off and it's good to do this every now and again and just give it a tap on your desk because bits of debris and things get caught up in there and the same in this section here so the first thing to do is, to be honest, I normally try and pull it out with my fingers, but, you know, health and safety and all that. So here's your spatula, the back of your spatula. Just press gently the blade tip into the foam section on your, the back of your spatula. Don't press hard because you might take the tip off your blade. Just gently and then remove the holder and the blade sits in there. So that's your standard blade. Now, I'll try and show you. Don't know how well you're going to see this. But your standard blade is an angled blade. And it's, I mean, it's quite slim. It's quite a sturdy and strong blade, but it's quite slim. So that's your standard blade. Just going to put that on my, on my table for a minute. And then your deep cut blade, do the same. Unscrew the cap. And again, just some light pressure just to put the blade in there and remove the holder. Now, I'm going to try and show you. So 
So, this one's the standard blade, this one's the deep cut blade. The deep cut blade is an altogether thicker, more chunkier blade. And I don't know if you can see, but on the tip, it goes up at an angle and then comes back down. Whereas the standard blade is just on an angle. Okay, so someone's just said if I put white card behind the blade, it might be easier for you to see. So we'll try that. Okay, so this is the standard blade and this is the deep cut blade. So your standard blade you use for anything really, card, paper, vellum, vinyl, I even use mine for fabric. Your deep cut blade, the stronger blade, this is more for cutting things like chipboard and grey board, you know the kind of board that you get on the back of pads and things. That's the kind of thing that you can use for this mount board. Although mount board appears to be quite sturdy, but it's got a spongy middle, so it is a bit difficult to cut. I normally try and stay clear of mount board. Um, but you can cut plastic with it and that kind of thing. So that's the difference between the two. So unless you're cutting some really, really thick media, you don't necessarily need a deep cut blade. And then all you need to do, hold your holder upright and just drop your blade back in and that's it. Put your cap on, turn it as far as it will go until the full of the blade is protruding. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. And then turn it back to set it. Now I don't use mine very often and I store mine so that there's no blade hanging out the bottom. And then you just do exactly the same with your standard blade. So just drop your blade back into its holder, screw your cap on. And again, take it all the way as far as it will go and then bring it back to set it to whatever number you want to set it at. So that's your blades. So I'm just gonna put that in the machine for now and move that out of the way. Um, cut pressure and cut speed and tearing. So let's just move you back up again. Okay, so I'm hoping that you can all see this. So if you go into the settings on your machine, and go to page two. This is where you've got cut speed, cut pressure, draw speed and draw pressure. Now I've covered this before in a live video, but anything with a black box around a number is a default setting. So if you, if you ever tinker about with any of your settings and you're unsure how to get it back to factory set, if you like, just plus and minus your numbers until you get a number with a black box around it. And that is the default setting. So the cut speed default setting is three. Now on my other machine, to be honest, I always had mine up at five and I never moved it. But with this machine, since I've got it, I've just left it on three and not touched it and I've not found any difference. So the speed, I think, is entirely up to you. The only time I would take the speed down is if I'm cutting something quite delicate and I just want to take my time with it. Cut pressure. The default is zero. I have mine on one. Again, it's entirely up to you. You can play about with the settings and find what suits you best. If you're cutting something and it tends to be tearing it and dragging it, you know, sometimes when it kind of ruffles the card up within your design, then that usually means you cut pressure or your blade is too high. And generally the pressure, the blade, as I've said before, the blade depth is the amount of blade that shows coming out of the end of the holder. The cut pressure is the amount of force that the machine puts on this blade when it's pressing it down onto your work, onto your media, your card, your paper, that kind of thing. So if you're getting ripping or tearing or dragging, 
and your pressure's up quite high, take your pressure down and see how you go. Leave your blade as it is and take your pressure down. If it's still doing the same and you've got your blade on quite high, then take your blade down. Or when I say quite high, you might not think it's high. You might have it on four and think that's not high. Just take the blade down as well. It's a little bit of trial and error until you get to know how your blade and your machine cuts with the, with the media that you use the most. But I would always say do a test cut. I mean, when you go to the home, when you get to the pattern, there's a test cut function here and you choose any one of those shapes and it will put the tiniest little shape on your mat and you can move it around. I don't know if you can see it moving there on the end of the cursor. You can position that anywhere you want on your media so it's out of the way and your machine will cut your test cut first before it cuts any other design that may be on your mat. And you can keep moving it and re recutting the test cut until you're happy with the settings and then you can cut your design. So that's hopefully explained a bit about the blades. I think it was Basma asked the difference between the cutting and the scanning mat. So I don't know if you hear Basma or not, but this is one of my cutting mats and it's a very old one and I've shown this before. It's all patched up on the back with packing tape where I've cut through it several times when it was new or when I forgot to change the blade setting on my machine and then I've gone to cut something that needed a lot less blade. But it's still usable. This is, this is probably the first mat I ever owned. So this is well over three years old now. And you can see it's all grubby and messy. Now, if I put a design on this and scan it through the machine, it will probably pick up the design, but it will also pick up all these marks on the mat as well. And it doesn't necessarily affect your machine and you can isolate your design on your machine to only show it that you want to cut a particular shape. But when you're using your cutting mat for scanning, you're just making your machine do extra work because obviously as it goes through and it's scanning, it's picking up all this, you know, all these lines and marks on your machine. So you, it, you're making it work harder, really. That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, I do use my cutting mat for scanning, <coughs> for scanning, but only tends to be every now and again on, on, and on something maybe quick. Your scan mat is a, a pure white mat with a plastic cover that's attached to it. When you get it, you may find it has a piece of blue tape up here. Just remove that tape. This mat you never cut on. You can't cut on it. The machine won't let you cut on it. So whereas with your cutting mat, if you scan a design in and it picks the design up, you can then tell it to cut. With the scanning mat, you can't. It's a nice, crisp, white clear background and if you look after it you'll only ever have to buy one and basically with this one you do the same you put your design on it scan it through let the machine pick up the the scan and then just save it into the machine and then you can go back and cut it so that's the difference between your cutting mat and your scanning mat so I don't know if there's any questions. I'm just going to have a quick drink while I'm waiting to see if you've got any questions. For any of you that follow my blog, I don't, you'll, you'll probably know that I hurt my back about two and a half weeks ago. I went swimming with my daughter and it aggravated my bad back and I've been in agony for over two weeks. I've not been able to sit or stand, barely walk. It's been awful but I'm feeling a lot better today but I've brought in my office chair today which has got a more upright back so it's given me a little bit more support while I'm sat here but I, I can't sit too long because I can feel it twinging again already now. So 
that's blades and mats so has anybody got any questions i know there's not many of you here at the moment but this video as always will go up on my channel and you'll be able to watch it at a later date and if you do have any questions um you can ask them and i'll i'll answer them just leave them in the comments under this video How do, you re how do you resize a design over several pages? Is that on the machine or, or in canvas? I'll just wait for you to reply to me and then I'll try and answer. So you want to know how to redesign, how to resize a design that's over several pages. I just need to know whether you want to do that in canvas or on the machine. On the machine, that's Sally. Okay, I'll bring my machine in. So I'm going to go into patterns and go into save data and into the machine and see what I've got on here. And can I just say, if you can hear a funny noise, there's some work being done on a house next door. I can hear it. I'm sat in my kind of sunroom, craft room, but I don't know whether you can or not. Um, but anyway, I'm just, just putting that out there. Right, let's try and find something. Okay, so let's just say I wanted to choose this design and I put it on my mat. And it's basically, it's the... the card shape I did a few weeks ago and I've got all these other pieces here with it so let if there was a part of this design on another page what you need to do is you need to go to add go back to your other page so I'm just going to go to save data and the machine and I'm just going to find something else something random I'll find this pattern and I'm going to say okay so that now puts two separate mats worth of designs on the same virtual mat okay so all that you need to do now is just bring them all together go into your editing icon which is the top left it's the one that looks like the square triangle and circle Go to the three red boxes, select everything, because that's going to select everything that's on this map now. Say OK and group. Now that all moves as a group, but that started out as two different designs from two different save files. So now I can go into the resizing icon, which is the square with the vertical and horizontal icons. And I can choose now to resize it so if I want to it's picking up the height of the bounding box so this is why I say drag everything in so if I want to resize that now bigger or smaller if I take it down on the height and just take it all down it's taking everything down in proportion and then I can say okay and I can ungroup it and say OK, and there are all the designs now that have all been resized in proportion. So if that was your file with, say it was a box and you had a base on one file and a lid on the other, you put the two onto one mat, group them, and then resize them. And then when you're ready to cut them, all that you need to do is, so if I, if, if I wanted to cut this shape first, I would just choose everything else and delete them. But what you need to do, if you're going to do it this way, you need to save the design before you delete anything because you've resized it. So you want to save it and then be able to get rid of those because you might not have enough space on your mat to cut everything in one go. Does that make sense? 
and just say yes or no if you understand what I'm saying and then I'll go over it again if you don't. Was it Sally? Okay, Paula said she's got that, but I don't, oh, it was Sally. Yeah, okay, so you understand that. So basically, if you bring two elements on and resize them together, save it before you cut it. So just go to save, put it, say, in your machine. And what it will do, it will ask you, do you want to overwrite the original or save a new one? I would save it as a new one. And then your original design is still as it was. So, you know, you would save it as a new file. I'll just save this for now although I don't need it, and it saved it as number 43, and I'd say OK. I'd go back to the machine, OK to delete all patterns, go into pattern, save data to the machine, and 43 is the last one. Then you would just delete all these off this mat and cut that, if that was, say, like a box base. And then you go back to the home button, Bring the pattern up again, so back to save data machine, back to 43, and then put it on your mat, and then the next time you delete that and cut the rest. And then if you decide that you don't want that save pattern at that smaller size, you can go back to patterns, go to save data, go to your machine, you can find the pattern that you don't want, you can select it and you can put it straight in the bin and say OK. Okay, any more questions? I just say while I'm waiting, somebody else asked me how you, how you do filled in text or a filled in shape. So, okay, you weren't saving it before. Yeah, that's what you need to do. If you're going to bring two things onto the mat and resize them, then save it, okay? Otherwise, if you don't, if you delete one and then you cut one part, you've got to go back and put everything back on and resize it again. Does that make sense? It just saves you some time. Okay, so these are some little thank you cards that I made. I don't know why I made them because I'm probably never going to use them, but... If you have a look at this, this looks like a stamped image, but this is a font that I have on my computer that I made the word thank you with the font converter. And if you're not sure what the font converter is, on my YouTube channel, go to the playlist and there's a font playlist. You'll find all the information in there. And I use the pen to fill this in. So if you look at that, the black writing there is completely filled in and that looks like it could have been hand stamped. So somebody asked me how you do that with text and how you do it with shapes. So that's going to be probably the next Q&A. And I've actually got a little project. I'm not sure if I've got it here. Yeah, I've got a little project, a, a simple, this is going to be a stash buster project. And I've used the same thank you smaller and I've filled it in. So again, it looks like a hand stamped image. So I'm going to cover that in one of the Q&A sessions, probably the next one. Someone's just asked me a question and it's gone. And I don't know how to get it back. It was, I think it was if you have more than one pattern, but I couldn't see what it said. So if you can ask me again, I'll try and answer it.
So if you have more than one pattern on a file, how do you cut one piece? Okay, so that's basically going back to what I've just said with, with how do you get the extra pieces on a on a on a file. I'll go into one and I'll show you. So I'll go into my machine. I don't have much saved on my machine, um, but I've got a few odd pieces. So here's the mum card I made in a video. Um, if I've got it here, but I've not got it now. Oh, I've not got it. Okay, so a few weeks ago I made a mum card. And it consisted of a base card and some layers. Okay, so if you can see there, there are three things on this mat. And that's one file. So if I just want to cut the shaped card and not the other two pieces, all you need to do is go into the icon in the top left hand corner that's got the box square and the triangle select the parts you don't want now you can select them individually by clicking on them and putting them in the bin or you can use the red boxes and use the first box which is to isolate just parts of your design but you've got to have one of the things you want to delete selected to be able to use this and then those two are now highlighted so I'll say okay OK, and I can drop them in the bin and say OK, and I've now just got the shape card, which I could then cut, and that's it. Now, if I go back to the home button and say OK, and go back to patterns and save data and back into the machine, that file is still there with the three sections on it. So when it says, you know, that you want to delete them, you're not deleting the file, you're just deleting sections from that session. So does that answer your question? Okay, so has anybody else got any questions? I'll just say I've got the camera at a slightly different angle this week as well, so I'm trying this, so I'm actually able to see your questions a bit better than I could before, but they're still a bit small on when they pop up from YouTube, so um, I hope that YouTube will do something about that or enable me to be able to see them longer because they flash up on the screen and if I'm doing something or I can't get to read them all, the question's gone before I can answer it. So has anybody else got any questions they want to ask me before I go? Or actually before I move on, I'm gonna try and show you how to cut this flower. No? Okay, so I'm gonna try and show you how I made my little flower where it is. This little vellum flower. Have I ever cut cardstock or chipboard? Yeah, I cut cardstock all the time, all different types of cardstock, and I've cut chipboard. Oh, a magnifying screen. What do you do with that? Do you put it on the front of your iPad? That sounds interesting. All right, okay, I'll have a look for that and see if it helps. Right, um, flower. So this started off as a basic shape. You can do this in canvas, you can do it on the machine, whichever you find easier. If you've, uh, To be honest, I find they're made to work with books, but, you, but they work with screens. Okay, brilliant, I'll have a look for that. Thank you. Um, I prefer working in canvas because it's a bigger screen area and I can zoom in and I just find that easier. But you can do this either in canvas or on the machine. How to do custom projects directly on the scan and cut canvas? What do you mean? Just ask me that question again, sorry. So what I'm going to do, I'll try and start showing you how to do this flower and I'll look for the questions as well. So pattern, basic shapes. 
you need to scroll down, I think it's to page seven. I'm trying to do two things now. I'm trying to scroll here and look at the screen. And you want this pattern, this shape here, which is on the top row and it's fourth from the left. And it's BA A094. Okay, see you. Thanks for being here. So it's this shape here. I'm going to take it down smaller. It doesn't matter what size you take it down to because you can adjust it once it's made. But for the, for the video, I'm going to make it not too small so that hopefully you'll be able to see it. So I'll probably make it about, that'll do, just under two inches, 1.84. And I want five. So I'm going to click under number, the plus button, until I've got five and say set. And that's now brought the five shapes onto the mat. Okay, I'm still looking to see if there's any questions, but I can't see any. So, right, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to bring these down at the bottom and do this one by one for you. So the first one you want to rotate. So you go into the editing icons, which is on the top left hand side. And then you go into the resizing handle and you go to the rotate hand, um, icon. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees twice. It doesn't matter which way, you just want the petal shape so that the point is at the bottom. Then I'm going to get the next one and I want to rotate this so it's slightly angled again with all the points pointing into the middle. So I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees once so it's horizontal and then I'm going to move it in 10 degree increments until it turns left. So I've taken it about 30, may have to adjust it. I'm going to get the next one in. I'm going to do this one 90 degrees to the right so it's horizontal. And then again, I'm going to use the right arrow on the 10 degree increments. And I'm going to do that 30. Or three times, I should say. Then the next one, I want to move ever so slightly to the left. So I'm just going to do that a couple of times. And then the last one I want to move to the right. So again, I'm going to do that a couple of times. And then for now, I'm going to say, OK. So I'll try and move you in a bit more. I'm going to say OK again, and then I'm going to zoom in. Hopefully you might be able to see this a bit better. So now all I'm going to do is position these little petal shapes. So that all the points point in towards the middle and I'm leaving a gap between them. Now, I don't know if you can see, but these two need to be adjusted left and right. So I'm going to go back to the editing icons, back to the angle I, um, icons. I'm going to move this one a couple of times to the left and this one a couple of times to the right. And then again, I'm going to come back to OK and zoom. You do have to play around with this. It's easier to do this in canvas because obviously you've got a much bigger screen and you've got your mouse to make things easier for you. So I'm going to zoom into 400% now. And just position these and when I'm happy with the position I'm going to say okay I'm going to come to the red boxes select everything so that's the right hand box say okay and group them and they now all move as one group and that's all I want them to do at the moment just be grouped together I'm going to say okay then I'm going to get to add back to the basic shapes and come down and find a circle Put it on my mat, go back into the editing icons and take it down in size. And I'm doing this by eye. 
So it's just until I think the circle looks right over the flower. I don't want it to cover all the leaves. I want it to just go over the middle section. So I'll try and zoom in again for you. And then you'll see what I'm getting at. If I zoom into 400%, so if you can see the circle now in the middle of the flower, I think that circle's a bit too big. I want it not as much up the leaves. So I'm going to make the circle a bit smaller. So I'm going to come back into the editing icons and make it smaller and position it. And again, I can zoom in. can bring the flower over into the middle of the car onto the middle of the mat so I've got a line running down the middle so it might make it easier for me to see and position the circle and once I'm happy with the positioning sorry I need to go back I need to go back into the editing icons and then I'm going to weld and that's, that's what it's going to look like. If I'm not happy, I can say cancel and I can go back and jiggle around with the position of the leaves or the circle. But that looks OK to me. And I'm going to say OK, OK. And then I can resize it from there. So the one that I've just shown you, this base flower, I think was about two inches. So you just go into the editing icon, take the size down. It's easier to do it this way. You can see the size move. And then I cut two at this size and one smaller. So once you're happy with the size, you just say you want two and say OK. And then I went back into the editing icons. I added another one. So I've got three. And then with this one, I made this one smaller. And again, I did it by eye. I kind of just positioned it over until I thought it looked about right. So again, if I zoom in, zoom to 400%, you can see the little one over the bigger one. And if I think it needs to be made smaller still, I just go back and make it smaller and then I just put all three on the mat and I cut them in vellum and then I layered them up and I've just put a little paper brad in the middle and I've applied a little bit of Wink of Stella to give them a bit of glisten on the leaves, don't know if you can see that. So that's how I made that and that's just from a basic shape. So has anybody got any questions on that? Just going to have a quick drink and my back's hurting me now. I'm sat, been sat here for about 40 minutes or so. So if you've got any questions, if you'd like to ask them me. I know there's a delay on me speaking to you and then the questions coming up. So that's why it's just going a bit quiet for a few minutes. But if you've got any questions, just let me know. Okay, so there doesn't appear to be any questions. So I think for today, um, someone's just put, it looks like I've missed this one. Which one? What have I missed? Okay, so I think someone's just put that they can weld shapes together, but sometimes it won't let them. Um, it might be 
If you have got a seam allowance on a shape and you're trying to weld it to something else, the machine won't let you do it. I don't know if that might be um, something that, that you've encountered. How to do custom projects directly in Scan and Cut Canvas. If you go onto my YouTube channel and go to the playlists, the person that's just asked that question, there is a specific playlist for Scan and Cut Canvas. Um, just for anybody that is new, on my channel I've got various playlists. So I've got, all my videos are put into playlists. So I've got videos specifically on how to do things on the machine. So you go to the machine playlist. I've got things specifically how to do in Scan and Cut Canvas. So you'd go to that playlist. I've also used a programme called Inkscape in the past and I still do use it from time to time. And there is a video coming up next week that is an Inkscape project. So there's a playlist for Inkscape. There's a playlist covering projects that are already in Scan and Cut Canvas. So the, the, the projects that Brother provide us. So there's a playlist, I think, from memory on that. There's a playlist on my sewing projects. And there's a playlist for fonts, specifically anything to do with fonts. And there's also a playlist, I think, that has some videos in that are like really just for beginners. So if you're new to my channel or you want to know how to do something, go to the playlist and go through all the playlists. They're all listed there and you'll probably find the answer to the question that you're looking for. Because I think from memory I've got something maybe like 250, 300 videos on my channel. I mean, I've been doing this now for over three years. So there's, there's probably going to be a video about it on there. So I hope that helps for the person that's just said to do a project directly in Canvas. Um, I forgot what I was saying now, sorry. Anybody else got any questions then before I go? This live session will be up on my channel as always. Um, there's generally a bit of a delay from the, the live session ending to when YouTube processes it. Sometimes they do it fairly quickly, sometimes it can take a while. Cheryl, thank you, you're welcome. Um, but the, but the, the, this uh, live session, as I say, will be there for you to go back and watch or if you've missed it or you've only just come in at the end and you want to know what we've covered, is that Louise? Thank you again. Yeah, my back is getting better, thank you, but it is aching sat here now. Um, you'll be able to come back and watch this. So the, the videos always stay up on my channel, whether they're pre-recorded or live. Okay, any more questions? I will try and do another one next Tuesday. Um, at the moment, Tuesday seems to be the best day for me. So I will try and do another Q&A session next week. And next week, as I say, I'll probably try and do the text one, the filling in the text or the filling in of a shape. If anybody's got a question relating to that, if you want to leave it under the previous Q&A session video or this, then that would be helpful. Paula, thank you. Glad to be of help. So please give the videos a thumbs up if you like them. Sally, thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, and, you know, hopefully I, I can be able to keep doing more and answer your questions and keep showing you how to do things that you want to know how to do. So I'll give you a few more minutes now just in case there's any more questions and then I'm going to wind this one up. Okay, well, there don't appear to be any more questions popping up, so I'm going to say bye for now. I've been on for 45 minutes. 
as I say, this will go live so you can come back and watch it. Oh, Louise, thank you. That's lovely of you to say. Um, but, you know, I just mess. That's all I do. That's how I've learned. I've, you know, asked questions, played about with the software and machines over the years, various cutting machines and, you know, just tinker about and then just not scared to do anything really and in you know in software I just mess about and if it doesn't work I use the undo button and I just keep plodding along until I can work things out but thank you anyway Louise and I'm glad to be able to have helped you okay so I'm going to go then now guys so thanks very much um there will be a video going up on my channel next week I've already pre-recorded it I did it yesterday but I will try and do a live session as well next Tuesday if I can. And as I say, on the live session, I'll do the filling in of text and the filling in of shapes with the pen tool. So I'll see you all soon. Thanks for being here. Sylvia, you're welcome. Thank you. And I'll see you hopefully all in my next video or my next live session. Thanks a lot. Bye.